Welcome everyone to Rewind, Recap, Relive, where legends and rising stars meet. I'm your host Jonah, here to bring you a great, extreme addition to the show. Of course, continuing our great lineup of ECW originals, we've got Sabu, former ECW World Champion, and he brought along Super Genie, and they're coming on with a guy who you are probably very familiar with if you watch friends of the show that you've seen us do collaborations with. That's right, the one and only GND. World Champion, Black Dynamite, Jeremy Prophet. What a cool episode this is. Sabu surprised us with the appearance of Super Genie. We talk some RVD, we talk some ECW, we talk some FMW, some barbed wire matches. We talk dream matches for Jeremy Prophet. We talk what he's experienced in his 15 year career nonstop in the industry and much more much more so stay tuned for that but first let's get into the winner of the dead man pin and dead man stickers from our wonderful sponsors over at wrestling pins where you could of course pick up some great pins mugs stickers and the like they've got the bad guy they've got the dead man they've got the hitman they've got the rattlesnake and so much more as always use the code rrr 15 off for 15 percent off your next wrestling pins order let's get into who won this giveaway next week's wrestling pins giveaway and next week's episode. Now we have a great new way here at Rewind Recap Relive of determining the winner for our weekly giveaways and I'm gonna show you it right now. So let's throw it over to the wheel. Now I have to name that wheel eventually, but you saw it there first, SSBM is your winner. Congratulations, you just walked away with the Dead Man pin along with some Dead Man stickers and you'll get a wrestling pins card in there as well. So much great things coming your way, SSBM, so congratulations. And before we move on to the next giveaway, I think I need a new pin. Whoa, would you look at that, a certain bad guy has invaded my tuxedo here. Uh, and you have the chance to win along with some great bad guy stickers here from Wrestling Pins. And all you have to do is comment hashtag R3 giveaway down below in this interview. That is hashtag R3 giveaway in the full Sabu, Super Genie, Jeremy Prophet interview. And you'll be entered to win this bad guy pin along with those stickers. And the winner will be announced on next week's episode. And next week's episode is a real treat. We've got Henry O. Godwin, one half of the famous Godwins coming on with the bare knuckle berserker Lord Crew. What a cool episode this is. Can't wait for you guys to see it. And if you enter, maybe your name will be announced on that episode. You get a shout out, you get the pins, you get the stickers, you get the wrestling pins card, you get it all. Enter hashtag R3 giveaway down below and good luck. Everything is taken care of. All that's left is for you guys to go right down below and smash that subscribe button. WrestleMania is around the corner, only a few months away and we are going to pick it up. Business is gonna get big here on Rewind Recap Reloop, so make sure you stick around for that. Enter the giveaway for the bad guy pin along with some stickers. Like the video, share it around, and smash that notification bell, ding, 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 so you don't miss a thing. You're on Rewind Recap Relive, and please enjoy Sabu, Super Genie, Jeremy Prophet. I will see you soon. Our first guest is really a veteran in his own right. Uh, he's been going strong in the wrestling business for 15 years nonstop, been in the ring with legends, has held world championships, is in fact the current GNW world champion. Please welcome Black Dynamite, Jeremy Prophet. I'm so happy to be here, Jonah. Melissa so Cole. happy, <laughs> Jeremy Prophet, so, right here. Yes. So so happy that to, to be here, and I think it's a, it's a great treat for the fans because you have one of the most maniacal, violent, vicious people in all of wrestling, and, and you have Sabu. So I mean, you know, it's a little bit. Of a <laughs> Are you talking about yourself or me? <laughs> 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 and our next guest is a legend in the wrestling business and an ECW original, uh, having brought his suicidal, homicidal, genocidal, death-defying offense all around the world. Please welcome former ECW tag team and world champion Sabu and Super Genie. Awesome. I bring out the more homicidal part of him. <laughs> He's more homicidal uh, than yeah. that means. Yeah. Uh, oh, I believe it, right. yes. Yeah. It's awesome having you both here. And I understand, Sabu, you were just on Jeremy's show, right? Joe phoned the ring. So there's a bit yes. of a connection there. 
Nice. And I want to start at the beginning for both of you. Jeremy, can you go first and tell me how it is you got into the world of professional wrestling? Oh, it was pretty simple. I mean, I was a young kid, 1993 or so, and uh, I saw wrestling. I saw Brett the Hitman Hart, and I was just hooked ever since. And then from there, I always knew I was going to be a wrestler. Went through high school, got my education, uh, continued on in education too, but at the same time started training. And that was with Jacques Rougeau here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Right. And uh, 2005 was when I decided to start wrestling regularly every week. Uh, by the grace of God, no injuries, no concussions. Never had more than a three-week layoff until this. Um, yeah. But, you know, looking forward to bigger and brighter things. And, um, you know, every time I'm on one of these shows, much like here, uh, it's always an opportunity to get the word out there, let people know who I am and, uh, you know, what I can do. And I'm really privileged to share this stage with uh, three wonderful people. Who's doing the interview? Me or you? <laughs> <laughs> Little bit of both. Sabu, how about you now? Let's hear how you got into wrestling. Uh, well, of course, I, I did five years amateur when I was in junior high and high school. And then when I got out, uh, my uncle started training when I was 19. And did you grow up a fan? Oh, yes, of course. But I was kayfabe. Uh, we'd go out to his house, my uncle's house, but he would never talk wrestling or anything like that. But sometimes they'd have the heels and the baby faces over his house. And they they would sit in separate rooms. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's how I started. How about you, Milton? Yeah. Well, I, I got started actually through pro bodybuilding, and I'd always I loved wrestling as a kid. I was always into stuff girls regularly aren't into. So, you know, not like I was playing with GI Joes instead of Barbies, but you know, I, I liked rough and tumble sports. I played rugby. You know, I. I did pro bodybuilding and then eventually I wanted to, uh, I was more athletic than just uh, bodybuilding. So I wanted to get into pro wrestling. So I started doing that. And I started with Killer Kowalski actually. Oh, wow. Up in Massachusetts. Wow. And did you take to it easily wrestling? Fairly easily. I mean, it was a little harder for me. I was more athletic when I was younger. The thing is, I had already progressed into pro bodybuilding. It's actually whenever somebody wants to get to wrestling, I always tell them to do the wrestling first and to develop your body at the same time. Because if you develop your body first and then attempt wrestling, it's so much harder because, you, you, oh, it's way harder because you have to specialize your body so hard. You have to diet so hard for, for bodybuilding. You have to, uh, you know, you learn to move in certain ways that aren't exactly functional. Like it's bodybuilding is all display muscle. It's not functional. And, mm -hmm. and wrestling is all functional. Right on. Wow. That's interesting. Yeah. And Jeremy, how about yourself? Did you take to wrestling easily? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that yeah. that's wonderful advice that um, Melissa was giving to the people out there. Definitely great advice. Um, and that was kind of the path that I followed, too. I mean, I started off, you know, I was kind of a bit of a skinny 175 pound kid uh, when I first stepped foot in a wrestling ring. And I knew that, obviously, if you want to make it big in this business, you have to look the part. You know, you don't have to be uh, super strong, but you got to look like you're uh, Superman when you're in there because that's what the people are paying to see. They're not paying to see the person sitting beside them eating the potato chips and donuts. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, when it came to that side, we could go to the gym that side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, that, that, that was the thing for me, too, is, you know, yeah, obviously learn the mechanics of wrestling, but also look like a wrestler. So I think that that's great advice for anyone aspiring wrestler or, you know, current wrestler out there. They should take pride in doing that. And I think bodybuilders, oftentimes they get overlooked as athletes because, OK, maybe they're not playing a sport like a baseball or football, but the athleticism that goes into being a bodybuilder, the discipline, the dieting and obviously the lifting. I mean, there are people playing sports at a top level, even Olympic level, that probably don't have that same kind of drive and discipline to be able to do that. They would suffer. And so it's something that really, if someone has that in them, they're definitely going to go far in the wrestling business. Yeah, it's much right. better to co combine the two. Like, well, I'm yeah. sure you were lifting weights while you were uh, training, and that, that's, that's much better. It's a better approach. It's easier on your body, and it... Uh, it, it it just helps people excel better. I, I noticed most of the, the people I've seen get into um, pro wrestling that started from bodybuilding first, say they, they had more of a difficult, they had a, more of a difficult time adjusting to wrestling because they were so used to the, the pro bodybuilding part, which is like, you know, one dimensional movement. Like you're not, you know, transitioning through moves oh, yeah. or, or like how you do with, with wrestling, everything is transitional in wrestling. So um, 
bodybuilding is it's it's much better to do your wrestling and go to the gym at the same time not vice it was much harder for me to right. start with bodybuilding yeah. and then go into wrestling it was much harder right on mm-hmm. So Sabu, for you, can we talk about your time in um, in Japan with FMW, right, that you got into? Can you talk about getting involved with them, some early memories you have from that time? How that happened was an accident. They called, Onita called my uncle, uh, the Sheik, and said, yeah. when you come to this tag team tournament, you can bring anybody. And he goes, I'll bring my nephew. He said, it doesn't matter who, you just bring him there, you know, it's a body. So I got over the first night, and uh, I was booked ever since. I, I wrestled seven years before that, and that was my big break. Is that when your uncle told you to wrestle like exactly. he wasn't watching? Yeah, sabu has <laughs> got a good story behind that, actually. Well, I, I said to my uncle before he went out, is there something I should do different? And he goes, I want you to do those moves, but I, what you think of when I'm not watching, but I'm watching. So do the moves when he wasn't watching, those were the ones I, I would do because they weren't, they weren't politically correct. Yeah, that was like the real him. So like his uncle right, yeah. was, was cool enough to understand that that's what really was Sabu and that's that's what got him over that was him and in that promotion you actually hold the record I believe for 34 barbed wire matches which is no, I, crazy I don't, that's not a record Onita Onita did way more oh did he really oh yeah wow. he, he, so, did, he, he did way more well, 34 is still, I mean, an astounding amount of barbed wire matches. How does that feel? Do you, do you have um, do you have memories of those matches? I mean, they must have been crazy. What was your thoughts walking into your first one? Uh, my thought was that I'm going to try hard. And I'm, I'm going to hit the barbed wire like it's a rope. And I watched the other guys wow. do it. They kind of ran up to the barbed wire and stopped and put their forehead on it. I go, that's crazy. You know, that's a shit. So I just made sure I was going to hit it full force and uh, not, not worry about it. And I did. Like the barbed wire was ex- like legit barbed wire when Sabu was yeah. wrestling barbed wire. It wasn't like rope or like yes. plastic or any of the sort of gimmicks you hear about today. Like he was actually running and ripping himself into barbed wire. <laughs> but I was thinking my first barbed wire match, I was thinking I'm never going to have another one. Yeah. And the next tour yeah. we have Would be two. my thought too, right? <laughs> and the next tour after that was 16. Jeremy, would you ever want to go into a barbed wire match? Sure, why not? I mean, uh, obviously, if that's what the promotion wants, if they're paying top dollar and they want to see Jeremy Profit in a barbed wire match, I'll do it. I'll do a barbed wire match. I'll do an exploding ring match. Uh, you know, whatever it is, whatever the fans want. How, scar- how many scars do you have on that body right now? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I kind of like to keep my clothes on for this interview, uh, but uh, <laughs> I, 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 do, I do have a few that I have acquired in the ring, nowhere near as much as, as this gentleman, Sabu. But, um, you know, the way I look at it is that if that's what the fans want to see, then, hey, as a performer, you, you got to deliver. I'm a kind of guy, you know, someone wants to call me up for a match. I'm going to accept it. I don't back down from any kind of challenge. So whether it be a barbed wire, death match, I, I don't sweat any of that. That that's that's all part of the game. And, you know, it's all all in good fun because I love the wrestling business and I love giving the people what they want. Yeah. What a good answer. Right. Yeah, of course. And Sabu, one more match that you had that you had tons of legendary matches, but one in particular you had was with it involved the Sheik and involved the ropes, actually, the barbed wire ropes being set on fire. And if you watch the uh, the the match take place, everyone, it just seems like everyone runs away at some point in the match. You just kind of take cover. Do you remember that? Could you talk about that match a bit? Oh, yeah, it, it, it was bad. Um, <laughs> it said when the fire gets started, don't do no high spots till the fire di- dies down. You know, they're going to start it and it'll be big and it'll, it'll die down. And I thought, okay, yeah. we didn't have really nothing planned and the fire never went down. It has got hotter and hotter and we could, in the middle of the ring, it was like a roaring a roaring fire. I mean, not sound of a roaring fire, like an th- earthquake. And uh, yeah, right. then we just jumped out and, and finished the match outside the ring. Now, my uncle got mad at me. When I jumped out, I threw water on him because he got burnt by the uh, by the fire. But he's, he got mad and goes, getting my hands wet. And I go, what do you mean? And he had to throw fire for Onita, and then he threw fire on Onita anyways. Would it last like six minutes? Oh, my God. Yeah, only six minutes, yeah. They, they did not expect it to actually get as hot as it did. No. <laughs> and and neither, neither, neither did anyone in the ring, apparently, at, either. At the, at the last minute, there was supposed to be two bo- two by four, two by four, two by four. One in the middle and two on the bottom. At the last minute, they didn't put in the ones on the bottom. If they would have, my uncle would have died. And I would have died trying to get him. That is some, you've had some crazy matches, uh, that, and that's an understatement. Yeah. That was a serious, serious fire. Yeah, no, I, I believe it. Anyone should go watch that video. It's crazy. And for somebody who hasn't seen a Jeremy Prophet match, Jeremy, how would you describe your style in the ring? 
Uh, I think the word that sums it up best is eclectic. Um, right. that's how I always describe myself is that I'm not a one dimensional wrestler. You know, you got a lot of guys, they're great athletes. They got great, you know, moonsaults and four fifties and Hey, you know what? I can do all that, but I'm also a guy who can go toe to toe with the baddest of people there and bring the fight to them. Uh, I like to describe my character as, you know, I'm the guy, if you put me in prison, I'm going to walk up to the toughest guy in there, slap him in the face and say, let's go. You know, th that's my calling card. I'm not the biggest guy, but I, I bring the biggest fight is how I like to say it. Um, and, and you get a bit of everything, you know, you get a guy who can rock the microphone like I do right now, uh, you know, someone who puts a lot of effort into himself to look the part. Uh, like I said, I'm not one dimensional. So you watch one of my matches, uh, you know, you'll see me do something, but you watch another match and it could be completely different. You're never going to get the same match twice. I'm not just one of these routine, same shine, same finishes, same false finishes. And you can watch any match. It's a dime a dozen. That's, that's not me. I, I bring to the table what my opponent needs so that we can get the best possible match for the people. And uh, even when I build the match, that's what I like to say is, you know, what are you known for? What is the coolest stuff that you can do? Let's do yeah. it. Let's give the people the best match. I'll take anything you got. You know, I ask the same of you and we take care of each other and we make sure we just, we blow the roof off this place. But uh, you need to add, you'll take anything they got within reason. Well, yes, obviously, there's a certain there's a certain trust that goes into it. But I like to say the more they're comfortable with, the more I'm comfortable with. So if someone gives me carte blanche, then I give them that same that same level of trust. So where, where I see you're out of Canada. What part of Canada are you from? Uh, I'm from Montreal, and oh, um, yeah, yeah. I forgot. I and, 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 and Melissa, we, we've actually we met uh, we, we, we've met a number of times before you and I. Um, yeah, did you meet at uh, OBW or? Uh, well, no, we met, uh, we met for the first time. It was in Toronto at a WWE event. Uh, just, we're both in the audience. We're sitting in the same section. And, oh, okay, uh, okay. Wow, I must really? have been there with Jamie D. You were wow. with, exactly, with Jamie D. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. That's where we first, I looked different. I had braids back then. Uh, I looked a little different. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, <laughs> that was where we first met. And then we um, also, in New England Championship Wrestling, uh, for Sheldon Goldberg. Uh, yes. We were on the same yeah. show there as well. And, um, and yeah, I mean, you know, I've, I've always kept tabs on you. You're, you're one of my favorite people, uh, in, in oh, wrestling. I that, think you're both beautiful thanks. and strong and, uh, enjoyed, you know, that. all the, the, the knowledge you've bestowed upon me in our few conversations. Uh, think you're a great person. Think the world of you. And, uh, I also know that you're a great Canadian too, from Thunder Bay, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, exactly. Thunder Bay. Yep. Yeah. But, uh, Good old T Bay. I just have to mention, uh, she had a problem with her leg uh, a few months ago and she had an agitated. I don't know if you guys heard. But she had her leg right. amputated, and right now she only has one leg. And well, I don't know if you heard that. Yeah. What? Yeah, I don't know if you heard that, Jeremy. I so ended up having we're, a we're putting up a GoFundMe for for Melissa. Yep. Oh, we absolutely. Actually, we we shared the link um, on my show, jo Jofo in the Rings yeah, uh, page. Thank you. I, I appreciate I that. that. We'll sh we we'll absolutely that. share that. Okay. Yeah, my Twitter is at like at uh, real Melissa Coates and. Real super genie. It's, it's all over, you know. It's, it, it's not hard to yeah. find. Just put Melissa Coates on GoFundMe. And the, the the main problem is, is like the doctors still don't know what caused this. I ended up suddenly getting all these blood clots in my arteries in my, my left leg. And I actually went to urgent care six weeks before I had to have my leg amputated. And the doctor unfortunately didn't check my arteries. He only checked my veins, which resulted in you know, me losing my, my leg because yeah. he didn't, he didn't discover what the problem was. So it's, it's been pretty horrible. You know, I've made my entire career off pro bodybuilding and off pro wrestling. So to have this sudden shock to my life, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult. I'm trying to deal with it as best as I can though, but it's, it's rough. You know, I never envisioned myself losing my leg ever in my life. Yeah. So. And, and you know, it's tougher for me because I have to watch her. Right. Exactly. It's great that we could have you both here. Yeah. yeah. And, and more people should be aware of this. And I think it's a, it's a realistic thing. It could happen to any of us, you know, yeah, and, really and it's could. unfortunate that it happened to you. Um, and I, I think I, it needs to be said how brave you are to, to, you know, still go through with this and, and, and to be here and to be in public. And, and, and it's just, you know, hats off to you for doing that. And I do hope that oh, things get you. better. And I always feel that doing these interviews, it's a platform for anyone to hear. And hopefully it reaches enough people that they can help support you, whether, whether financially, emotionally, prayers, whatever it may be, uh, because I know you're an awesome person. And, you know, hopefully this is only a bit of a setback and, and, you know, you'll be, you know, back to doing what you love 
wrestling, bodybuilding, these kinds of things. Um, I, I, I hope so. I mean, luckily today, now okay. nowadays, there's, you know, there's a, it's not such a big deal. You know, the, uh, I can't remember her name, but there was just a Sports Illustrated model who was in the Sports Illustrated swimsuit ed- edition who had, um, I think she's missing um, her leg below her knee, but, you know, there's a lot of supermodels now. It's, it's not such a, nowadays it's so much more accepted uh, to be different. So, yeah, I, I mean, lucky for me, it, it's happened at a time where it's, it's not like a dirty word or something to be ashamed of. So, I mean, I, I plan on getting back into fitness shape. I plan on help, you know, if I can assist Sabu with his matches, I plan on still helping him with his yeah, matches. No, yeah. And, you know, I'm just going to try to be exactly who I was before. It's just it's just different. It's just more work now. Right. Yeah, no, I'd love to see you out there with Sabu still. I hope everything goes well. And we'll definitely put that up there for everyone to see. Oh, uh, absolutely. You. Personally, I think the I, I've said it many times. I said it when we interviewed him here on our show. I'd love to be in the ring with Sabu. I think we could have a hell of a match. And it would be it, yeah. it would be a plus and a blessing if you could be there in his corner uh, for that match, too, I think. Sure. Well, we'll definitely have to plan that for sure. What's going on up there in Montreal lately? Probably not too much wrestling, though, right? Uh, none, none at all. I, I've had one show since uh, July was the last time we did one set of TV tapings, three matches. Uh, it's the longest wow. break I've, e- I've ever had in my whole career. 15 years of doing this. Uh, like I said, no injuries, no burnout, no concussions, no time off. Um, and well, then- Montreal shut down. I know my brothers live in Windsor and it's completely shut down. Um, we actually got it worse than anywhere in North America, and I'm not even exaggerating. We have here in Montreal a uh, eight o'clock curfew that goes into effect. If you're found out on the street, you could be fined up to six thousand um, dollars. Stores can't sell $6, anything fine. My up God. to six thousand. Yeah, it, it's it's really if you want to look up what's going on in Montreal, it will blow your mind, especially uh, if I'm not mistaken. You guys are in Vegas, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so I think Vegas was one of those, uh, Nevada was one of the States where they kind of went up, but then, then it kind of, it kind of started going down. Um, our actual numbers, and I'm not even exaggerating when you compare by population size, Quebec, which is the province I'm in are actually worse than almost anywhere in the world. I think we were only behind Brazil when you compare it uh, to a country. Yeah. We're doing worse than the U S we're doing worse than Italy, Spain, and we're living in misery. Uh, people are losing their jobs, losing their businesses. We're living through all kinds, all kinds of harsh times here. People have no idea. And when it comes to wrestling, um, you know, not to say wrestling was that great to begin with before, but it's even worse now because as Canadians, we don't get the same exposure. We don't have the same opportunities. And there are no shows running from from coast to coast. We're talking from Vancouver to St. John's. There are no shows. And even us here, uh, wrestling schools are closed. It is it is near impossible to to be able to do anything wrestling related other than maybe sitting here in front of a microphone. And, um, you know, I say that, that, you know, now it's kind of given me time to reflect because as Canadians, we have it harder because we don't have big companies working here, giving us jobs, companies that are allowed to run. And uh, this just makes it even harder. Again, I try to be positive about things. Um, You know, things could always be worse, but right now, you know, the reality needs to be said that like we're going through some harsh times here and, and Canada is kind of getting it worse than, you know, almost anywhere else in North America. Uh, I know Canada seems to have handled it a lot better because uh, I'm a dual citizen. I'm actually from Thunder Bay and, and then I got my green card through pro bodybuilding. And I, I know just in talking to my brothers in Windsor, it sounds like Canada handled it a lot, a lot better. Like, so what are you doing with yourself since you're not wrestling? Um, I've been dedicating myself to doing this, hosting these podcasts, yeah. right get, in, interviewing killing it. Yeah. wonderful killing people. Joe, um, which it's, it's a, it's a two, it's a two edged sword because it's given people uh, exposure. Uh, we interview independent wrestlers. We interview legends like Sabu, like yourself. Um, it, it also, you know, gives me a chance to reconnect with some people who maybe I haven't spoken to or the kind of people I wouldn't necessarily pick up a phone and call because I might feel like I'm bothering them. But yeah, you know, yeah. now I get to talk to them like this, you know, I'd, I'd love to talk with you guys and Jonah every day, but, uh, you know, it's not the way the world works, but at least this gives us a chance to have a fun little round table. And at the same time, it gives the people something you know to be able to watch and to find out what's new in our lives uh and other than that i mean i've just been you know trying to keep in shape like i said gyms are closed but it hasn't stopped me i just see it as a detour so you know you run into a detour you still got to find your way home so uh you know i've been training at home uh doing all kinds of home workouts Uh, i don't have a gym but i've managed to get some equipment together and 
you know, still training hard, dieting hard, just waiting for that call because you never know when it's going to come. And I always said, I want to be ready yesterday when that call comes. You know, you call yeah. me, I don't need to, you know, do a million push ups, go tan, uh, all those things. You know, I'm ready at a moment's notice when that call comes. And, uh, you know, hopefully like is, it does. Is the WWE ringing people up during this time? Like, I, I, I've heard it's hired some, uh, WWE's hired some people, like, I've heard that too. Yeah. Some yeah, people. yeah, they've, they've hired a lot of Americans and um, you know, if you follow anything I've, I've put online on social media, uh, by the way, would love to have a follow from, from, yeah, yeah, we'll you. Find you. Um, yeah, we'll find you. but m my latest crusade has been the fact that Canada, and I'm sure you can relate to this as a, a Canadian uh, we're kind of overlooked because WWE is hiring anyone that has, you I know, agree. some hype, some hype on the independence. You know, that we all yeah. know there are certain companies out there. You wrestle for them. You're going to get more exposure. You're going to rub shoulders with more people and your name is going to get out there. But we have tons of talent here in Canada. Nobody knows about because we don't have those same connections. And yeah, no. the, the, and the, 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 the God blessed border. I'm, I'm trying to be polite. because I know Jonah runs a PG show here, but uh, <laughs> that. <laughs> Friggin border uh <laughs> it's impossible to cross i mean it's to a point yeah. where i go across I, I go to cross the border even if let's say i'm going to train or you know i'm not i'm not getting paid to wrestle and it's like you know they want to do everything short of cavity searching me uh because we can't <laughs> you know, go like there the cavity searches do you yeah no, no <laughs> I, you know, not, not unless it's someone as beautiful as you doing it no i'm, I'm not a fan <laughs> but uh when it comes down to it they make the damn border so hard to to go across and you need to have a visa but the fact is, is that you need a big company to sign for the visa for you. And even then, it's, it's a toss up if they're going to approve it or not, because you right. have to, by definition, uh, an O-1 visa, which is what it's called. You have to have an exceptional skill um, more than any other American. And so wow. you need to provide all kinds of newspaper articles, uh, other things to justify that. A lot yeah. of just, just a lot of nonsense. And when it comes down to it, if we can't go there to even try out, why is a company going to decide, hey, OK, we're going to sign this guy. We're going to give him a shot. You know, no matter what kind of amazing highlight video you put on YouTube, th there's no way to gauge. Hey, is this person really got a good mind for the business? Is he going to mesh with our locker room? Is he when yeah. you don't you can't make those connections? It just it, 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 it blocks you. And it's like now all the major companies, even WWE, it, it's not what you do. It's it's who you know. It's politics. You oh, know? Completely. And yeah, when completely. it comes down to it, that's how it is. Yeah. And it, it's a game of who, you know, but how can you get known if you can't cross the border? So that's been my thing that I've been ranting about trying to get as many people to hear. Um, and it's slowly, you know, starting to the dominoes are slowly starting to fall. More people are starting to know about it. But other than that, we're just stuck here in Canada, twiddling our thumbs without a way to make a better living for ourselves because the big companies don't scout us. You know, I look at someone like you, Melissa, you know, you, you're kind of one of those exceptions to the rules where you were Canadian and you managed to make it. Um, but the thing is, is that it, it's so much harder for us now because, like I said, no one is looking at us. There's no scouting in Canada. And that would kind of get around it if more people had their eyes on there. Do, do you think that you as someone, you know, who came from this, you could, you could maybe be a voice to that cause too, that to say that there are great Canadians out there not getting looked at by the big companies? Oh, I'm, uh, I would agree. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I could. I just, I, myself, I haven't been, I'm probably going to come up to Canada soon. I mean, even for me, like with my family being in Canada, it's been a little iffy for me even going over the border. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a reason now because, because of my medical emergencies. So I'll, I'll probably pop up to Canada pretty soon, actually, just to, because my family's, you know, they're right across the, from Detroit, they're up in Windsor, mm -hmm. and I have so many old friends in, in Canada. But I mean, that's definitely a possibility for sure. Yeah. And you know, I never look, thought I of that, but that's a good idea. Now that I mean, the more the, the more people that can can talk about this, the more we're getting out there because there are a lot of great talents. I say there's a lot of great future champions, future main eventers, Hall of Famers, even that their careers just live and die in Canada because nobody's looking to it. But the more of us that can make noise, you know, the more we can put eyes on that. And well, uh, I'll definitely try to promote this show as much as I possibly can now that you bring it up that way, because that. I, 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 I see what you're saying. That's got to be so frustrating. It's, uh, it's really a, an outdated, I think, system that's in place that prevents us. I call it yeah. systemic ignorance is what it is. It's just they're ignorant to the fact that Canadians don't have the equal playing field like people in America when it comes to professional wrestling and don't have those same opportunities. The system is just broken. You know, a young, young kid yeah. coming up in the business in Canada – um, watches wrestling, watches a company, even a company like, let's say, Ring of Honor. They have one Canadian on their roster. They have tons of uh, people from the UK. They have Australians. 
Yeah. And, th- and this is what ends up happening is that they watch and they'll say, well, you know, there's no Canadians there. All these other great wrestlers, I guess, can't make it. I guess they're not good enough. Uh, you know, I guess I shouldn't try. And they get discouraged. Guys think just because they're not on TV that they're not as good as those guys. And I look at myself and I say, you know what? It doesn't matter that this guy's been on TV for 10 years, 20 years. You know, I've been doing this for 15 years at the top of my game. That person just has more eyes on them. That's the only thing that they have over me. I'm just as much a professional. But unfortunately, the rest of Canada doesn't think that way. And it's... Uh, it, it can be discouraging for some people here. It, it can be the same way with Canadian bodybuilding as well. Cause you know, I, I, I went up through the ranks of Canadian bodybuilding and, and, and it, it, it's very different. Like I, I went from, uh, uh, I turned pro uh, by winning the middleweight t- uh, title in um, Canada. And then when I did the Jantana, I actually won the Jantana, but Jantana. the Jantana is a huge pro women show. And the thing is, it was more like in Canada, I wasn't so well. I, I'm just saying I, I was on I was being looked at because of all the magazines I was in. But in Canada, Canada less knew who I was. I don't know if I just said something that sounds backwards mm-hmm. to what you're saying, but I, <laughs> yeah, I'm no, no, I, it's exactly it was, what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but it, it was it was it's being judged differently, but it's almost like you got to get your butt down to like when you can get down to California. Cause I think they're signing a lot of people from California. A lot of people from Vegas is what I heard recently. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it, it comes down to who, you know, I see a lot of these companies, you know, whether it's a, the click from New York or from Cali, from all right. these places, it's who, you know, and there's still no excuse why top companies don't go to Canada and say, Hey, let's look at the best guys here. Let's look up the best woman, right. the best tag team, the best heavyweight, the best cruiserweight, the best hardcore wrestler. And, and let's bring them in. I think that if, if a company would open their eyes to that, it, it could be game changing for them. You know, if a company, you know, let's I'm say, not sure what Ron Hutchkin, what's Ron Hutchkinson doing lately. Ron, I know Ron he had Hutchinson, a book out. He's a, he's a very good friend of mine. He's uh, one of my top mentors in wrestling. He did put out a book. Uh, I've been yeah. dying to get him on my show. Um, to, to talk about these kinds of things, but uh, right. you know, he's doing good. It was his birthday actually last, uh, I don't know when this is going to air, but uh, it, on this past Sunday, it was his birthday. Oh, and, nice. Uh, well, I'll send him a message. I haven't talked to him for a while, but yeah. uh, he, I, I'm, I'm in his book too, by the way, because when he took his uh, 27 year hiatus from wrestling, he came back and did a tour in uh, the Maritimes and uh, his first, his first match back was against me. Oh and, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's one. I, I felt honored by that. But Ron has been he's been a mentor to me. He, he taught me more about wrestling than than my own trainers. He taught me so much. And uh, I felt honored that he chose me for his comeback match. And I always love to tell the story. And it's in the book that uh, I was the comeback match. I think I was his next match. And then they wanted him to work with some other guys. And he worked with them. And, uh, you know, to, to put it politely, those guys, uh, they, they didn't cut the mustard when it came to actually being able to put on a good match. So he pretty much told them, he's like, if I don't, if I don't get to work with Jeremy for the rest of the tour, then uh, I, I'm not wrestling the rest of the tour. So then it was me and him for all uh, the rest of the show. Cool. I'll have to check it out on YouTube then. I'll have to check it, out some of those matches for sure. It is on YouTube, yeah. yeah. The uh, the whole point of this show is conversation. So this is great. I'm happy you two are getting along. I just have some specific questions for Sabu about uh, that I want to get back into about his career. Can you talk about breaking into ECW, Sabu? How I got started. Um, Paul yeah. Heyman, I was talking to Paul Heyman for about six months. He wanted to bring, he knew me from, he just knew who I was from Japan. He wanted to bring me into yeah. his new company called World Wrestling Network, WWN. So he said that but before the World Wrestling Network, I mean, the World Network of Wrestling, um, he wanted me to warm up with this company called ECW, and I never heard of it. But uh, so I came in, and that's how it started. It was supposed to be a, just a, a, a spot show, not, not, a, not a career. When you first came in, you were in like kind of a Hannibal Lecter uh, get up, right? Like that was the original gimmick. Who came up with that? Do you remember? Was that Paul Heyman? Paul Heyman did. I, I hated it because. Uh, you already had a lector, and it was too much work. When I tried to fight, get out of those chains, when I finally got out of them, I was blown up. I couldn't breathe. <laughs> and at one point, I saw you had a, a dark match on Raw with Owen Hart, right? I actually had three dark matches that weekend. Uh, JJ Dillon called me and said, uh, Vince wanted to get a look at you. We come in for a tryout. I go, tryout? What the hell's a tryout? I figured they want to or they don't. I didn't know. I never heard of a tryout. So I said, did the tryout pay? He goes, yeah, 300 a night. I said, okay. <laughs> I'll come for that. So I, I wrestled Scott Taylor one night, and then Vince went, offered me a job and said he wants me to wrestle Owen because that would be his mark, his mark match, or like a match he wants to see. And so that, that's yeah. why that's what happened with Owen Hart. Didn't Brett it, it never aired, yeah. though. 
Gingerbread oh, it never that's did. The best no. Ever seen. Yes. Yeah. What was that? I'm sorry. She's talking to me. Oh no! But was that what was that Bret Hart? That match with Owen was like the he didn't know how good you were until he saw that match. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. That's a nice. That's a great compliment. No, no, that's fine. It's all good information. Uh, Jeremy, back to you. I don't mean to. I don't want to pigeonhole you because you're Canadian, but you just spoke about it a lot, and I'd love to know if the Hearts uh, mean anything to you that they represent in Canada. Oh, the Hearts mean everything to me. Bret, good. Bret Hart right, is the reason good. that I that I got <laughs> into wrestling. Um, you know, I, I feel privileged that I got the chance to meet him, have a conversation with him. Uh, little known fact that I haven't even said on my own show here, but um, in dealing with this whole thing with Canada, and everything, I actually wrote a letter to Bret Hart about this. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm taking this very seriously. I've written to Bret Hart. I've written to Lance Storm. I've written to uh, I, I have uh, Tyson Kidd, TJ Wilson uh, did a two hour interview with him that's going to be dropping on our channel. Uh, oh, in a incredible. couple of weeks, when I say that I'm serious about this, th this is my number one priority is to fix this for Canadians, for myself and for the rest of the wrestlers in Canada. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like Brett is already uh, up to speed on that. And that's just by the fact that, like, I happen to have a family connection um, that enabled me to facil that facilitated getting that to Brett. Um, right. but yeah, no, the hearts, uh, I'm a fan of all of them. Uh, you know, uh, I always said, even on the independence, Teddy Hart, uh, was a wrestler who I look at and I said, you know, he's a fantastic talent. Uh, you know, he's, he's a dual citizen. So that kind of, you know, helped him too, in, in getting out there, but I, I look at his wrestling and that was a match that I wanted in terms of people who are on the independent scene would have loved to do battle with Teddy Hart, uh, who I'm pretty sure Sabu knows, knows Teddy quite well. Uh, and one of my biggest regrets well i didn't get to ask you about the fight between teddy hart and and cm punk because he says that you, you broke up that fight i did i did yeah. it, they, well, what, they, what, they could both they could, they could both throw down but uh they're gonna throw down in the parking lot of a restaurant we have uh catering at yeah, in nashville so that's the only reason i broke it up i broke it up and pushed them towards the arena i said go go go, go to the ring in front of nobody to do that you know don't do it out in the public and embarrass us yeah, yeah. but uh I'll... yeah i broke it up and when Teddy Hart, when I, when I stepped in, he kicked me in the nuts because he tried to get punk on accident, but he kicked me in the nuts. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, so yeah, just, just bringing it back about, about the hearts. I mean, yeah, like, right. uh, Brett, Brett has always been my, my favorite wrestler. Uh, never seen a bad Brett Hart match. One of the greatest of all time. When he says he's the best there is the best there was the best there ever will be man was telling the truth. Yeah. Um, and you know, Owen way ahead of his time with so much of what he did, so much of his, his technique, his aerial ability. Uh, and Owen really had it on the mic. That was the one thing, you know, compared to Brett Owen, you know, he could cut one hell of a promo to complement his in-ring skills. And uh, I had the right. chance to, to get to know Smith Hart very well. Uh, he was one of the older Hart brothers. Uh, he was living around our area for a while. So I got to know Smith and his son, Michael, very well also. Um, so, yeah, I mean, with the Hearts, they're, they're legends here. And, you know, I feel privileged to have been course, under the yeah. learning tree. And they inspired me to be a wrestler. Hence why I, I do what I do today to try to pay it forward to the next generation. Uh, hopefully, you know, bust open this, uh, this barrier that's keeping us back. Right. And, Jeremy, I think at this point, I mean, anyone can see you're passionate. You've got all the tools. Anyone who checks this out should definitely brush up on Jeremy Profit. So this is a good segue. I want to know, in your career, if you had to pick out some accomplishments, what would they be for you in your career? 15 years. Who, who, who me? Ah. Uh, uh, this one's to Jeremy, and then we'll go to you. Then I want to hear you. Um, I mean, I, I've had the chance to, to share the ring with, uh, with a lot of legends, a lot of people I grew up watching, a lot of today's top stars. Um, I had a match with, with Rey Mysterio, uh, which I think is uh, definitely one of the high points of my career. Uh, you know, have had the chance to perform on WWE SmackDown, uh, did a week-long tryout for them down in Florida, uh, kicked tons of ass in the tryout, did extremely well. Um, unfortunately, nothing came of it, but, you know, that's just the game we're in. Like I said, it's about who you know more than about what you can do. And right. uh, as Sabu can attest to, if you don't have a, a friend in the booking team, then, uh, you know, who's going to go to bat for you? Um, so, you know, there's those accomplishments and, and, you know, I, I, my biggest accomplishment is I feel that if you see Jeremy profit on the marquee, you, you yeah. know, you're going to get a certain quality of match. So, you know, those who know, not everyone knows who I am, but those who know, know what I bring to the table and, um, who knows what my legacy will be at this point. If I can make this Canadian thing happen and open the door for, for our country, That'd really be amazing. Maybe, yeah. Maybe It'd that'll be, be my legacy. The catalyst. Right. Sabu, how about you now? Same question. Accomplishments in your career that you were proud of that you think of fondly. Uh, my first match in Japan, I was the proudest. And my first match in ECW with Taz was, was my proudest. Anyone after that was kind of uh, second.
one specific moment for you that I think everyone remembers that it just really embodies your toughness and resilience was when you wrapped your uh, your gash in that barbed wire match, just wrapped it up with some tape and continued the match. I think that was with Terry Funk. What was going through your head when you wrapped your bicep like that? You just wanted to continue remember. the match? You don't remember? Yeah, I was. <laughs> it's my second worst injury. First worst injury is my neck. Second one is this. That second one is on my arm. Wow. He actually was pulling stitches out of his arm for years later. He had stitches in his bicep coming out from that. It was when I first met him, oh he, he still had stitches coming out of his arm. It was that was uh, 15 years later. Yeah, he 15 actually years had later. <laughs> surgery. Like on, if you look, uh, I think it's on. A, I don't know if it's his YouTube channel, but he has himself Sabu performing surgery, and it shows him like pulling these stitches out of his arm they, they were, the doctor didn't do a very good. Uh, they, they were buried job. inside my arm. They're buried, and they're supposed to be stitches that dissolve, which didn't dissolve. They got infected. And a very wow. pungent smell, yeah. by the way. Oh, I believe That's it. Yeah. Smell <laughs> it's the arm. first smell you. <laughs> Um, for you, Sabu, how was your relationship with Terry Funk? Because I heard recently he wasn't That's doing great. the greatest. He's yeah, a, he's a godfather to me. He, he's he's a good. Like, like when his first when he first started, my uncle broke out breaking in for Dory, his dad, Dory Senior. Terry oh, wow. and Sheik used to ride together. When, when Dory, when Terry was fifteen, he used to ride with the Sheik. Yeah, oh, Terry is great. Uh, did you ever have any run-ins with him, Jeremy? With Terry Funk? With Terry Funk? Yeah. Oh, yeah, ab absolutely. In fact, uh, nice. there's a very famous video online uh, that uh, people can check out. Uh, when I was working with a good friend of mine, Hannibal, who runs the Hannibal mm -hmm. TV, oh, yeah. uh, we did a press conference. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. It's a, a press conference where Terry Funk and Hannibal just watch that. Yeah. Get into um, they, they get into a, they get into a fight. And if you haven't seen it, uh, take the, the three minutes to watch it. I think you'll be very entertained. It is uh, Terry Funk at his absolute finest uh hell of a brawl and i happened to be there i was wrestling lanny poffo on that show ironically oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, uh, i think i heard this. about this yeah that was in thunder it was in thunder bay that we had that oh, uh, oh, that, really? press, that press conference and show yeah oh, i i wrestled lanny poffo and i wrestled scott steiner in the same night believe it or not and uh Hannibal was doing a match with Kevin Nash and Terry Funk was the special guest referee. And uh, they, they just beat the tar out of each other at the press conference. It, it is a thing of beauty. And um, I feel privileged to be a part of it. And another thing people don't know is that like, I pretty much wrote that out. Like that was, uh, yeah, yeah, I was the, we came up with the whole idea on the, on the ride up. It was a long 21 hour drive from Ottawa all the way up to Thunder Bay. Uh, oh, literally, literally a longer drive than if we were to drive to Florida um, in the dead of winter. And we came up with it, Hannibal and I, all the way on that long 21 hour drive. And we said, okay, we're gonna do this press conference. And you know, we, we think we can get Funk to go along with it. And pretty much what you see play out, the, the step by step of that uh, was my ideas. So uh, I'm very proud of that. And the video got like uh, almost a million hits online. And so- oh, really? I think it definitely oh. uh, definitely was a success on all. Man, points. we thought wrestling was real. You just ruined it for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, Melissa, it, it, watch that video, and I'm pretty sure even you will have your doubts that what you're seeing is, uh, you know, scripted in any way. It is so well done. I'm so proud of it. And um, if you don't happen to notice me in the video, you'll definitely hear me because I'm I'm pretty vocal in the background. And uh, it, it was something really special to be a part. Of. I guarantee you guys will love it. I'll send you the link once we're uh, yeah. once we're off the air. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I heard a lot actually about that. I did, I have not watched it yet, but I heard a lot about it. What about <laughs> the time Hannibal got it in, got into it with uh, with uh, did he get uh, a, Poffo, Randy Poffo, at the same time? Pop? Yeah, I was there. People can see that video online too. Yeah, I was there got, for that. You got Randy Poffo in a hammerlock or something. Yeah, yeah, in the locker room, Lanny walked in and Lanny, Lanny slapped, slapped him across the face. But um, see, a lot of people didn't know the story behind that and what happened. And people think, oh, it was, you know, they just got into a brawl in the locker room or maybe someone was upset about the finish. Or What, what really happened was Lanny, um, they lost his luggage when, when he, um, oh. he flew into, this was in New Brunswick. So he's flying in from, I think, from Florida and they lost his luggage at the airport. So he only had the clothes that he was in and had to wrestle like that. Oh, no. the oh, that's why he was just in jeans. Yeah. 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 That's why he's, exactly. why he's dressed just in, you know, casual. He's in a speedos. So, 
Uh, no, no, he, he he didn't have his speedo. He uh, he was just he was in like jogging pants or a, your jeans and a and a t-shirt. So in the match there was some friction. Now I know you've been in the ring with Hannibal. You know he's a, he's a hard hitting dude. He gets he gets very in the moment when he's in there. Um, you know, take it from a guy who's been in the ring with him a good twenty times or so and somehow lived to tell about it. Um, so he started laying in some shots on Lanny, and what upset Lanny was that he tore his shirt and just tore it clean off of him and then started laying some chops in on him. And Lanny was very mad because that was the only shirt that he had. Um, so from there, he was upset. They exchanged a few words. It went backstage. The part that people don't know is that it was already planned that they were going to have like a little altercation. We were going to film a little backstage skit. But it actually turned real because Lanny was genuinely upset over what had taken place in the ring. So we kind of got a, a little bit more bang for our buck with what happened there. I, know. I, I thought it looked unplanned. Yeah, no, it, it was it was it was it was planned. But it, how can I put it? So it was supposed to happen. But Lanny was genuinely upset and, and right. kind of took a liberty or two at the start of it, upset Hannibal and and. Cooler heads prevailed at the end of it, I, I guess, because they wrestled the next day. So. Hey, does Hannibal still have hepatitis? Uh, he got cured. And uh, is, that, is that even true? Is no, no, it's, it's true. It, 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 it's I it's true. I, I think he was the first. He went out to uh, to Arizona and he had some some treatments done, and uh, they, they cured him. Treatments. Yeah, he went he went to Arizona for treatment. Arizona. Oh, okay, okay. And um, I think he he was like the first one, and uh, in fact, wow. he even. Uh, he even retried to because WWE had given him a contract and they pulled it because of the hepatitis. And wow. so he he reapplied because now he was cured and he he was given a tryout. But, you know, from there, I don't know what happened. Oh but uh, no, he, he's 100 percent cured. So, it, you know, good on him. I wrestled him. He's a bit of a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what crowbar means, though. Uh, stiff. stiff. Ah, I would say stiff. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> stiff. And then some. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Go buyers don't bend. <laughs> Sabu, I want to get into your time WWE uh, when you faced John Cena uh, in 2006, I think, right? How was that? How was that experience for you? That was pretty cool. He, he's better than anybody gives him credit for. Because before I wrestled him, a few guys like Kurt Angle, one of them said, uh, you know, he he uh, had baseball bat for fists. You know that he's gonna be stiff with me. I said that's all right, but he wasn't. He was really good, uh, unselfish. And he even called a few of my uh, spots I forgot. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So you enjoyed it? Did you enjoy? Yeah. Did you like that ECW storyline they ended up doing with WWE? No, no, I didn't care as long as I got the rest. I, I, no, I didn't like it. Footnote right. on that, yeah. Jonah is Let's I was it. actually I was actually there live when he had that match with John Cena. Oh, you oh, were? Yeah. Well, what did you think of it? I was I loved it. I was in the crowd, yeah. and and I, like I said on on our show, I love that um, you know Cena was getting booed out of the building. But, you know, a credit to his ability to work and the story that they told in the ring. By the end of the match, Cena managed to win over the entire audience. And I thought that was one of the coolest things yeah. about it. He won me over. He's, a, he's very good. Very underrated. Sabu, now, are there any matches that you ever wanted to have that you didn't have any dream matches for you or that you still want to fulfill? Yeah, uh, like my favorite matches was with Van Damme. But the match I want to have yeah. probably won't happen against Brock Lesnar. Oh, really? Yeah, I love Brock. Nice. You think you two would get? You think you'd mesh well together with Brock? Oh yeah, I I, I know he would. Nice. Yeah. He's the kind of wrestler. I, he's the kind of wrestler I like to wrestle. Guys that don't do my stuff. He doesn't do nothing. I do. He does all power stuff and shoot stuff. And I I don't do none of that. And he don't do no flying. I just had a question on that for for Sabu because I meant to ask him when he was on our show. I didn't get to. Um, Sabu, when was the last time you and Rob Van Dam teamed up for a match? Uh. Oh, for, and, well, we tagged him uh, in Impact last year. Okay. But the last time we wrestled each other, it's been a few years. I think it was in France or somewhere. Okay. Because it got, it got me thinking that, you know, we've had Sabu up here for a company for the IWS. I actually have the, the IWS tag team titles, which are in my possession right now. And uh, like I said, I'd love to have a match with him, but I'm thinking, you know, why not raise the stakes and maybe we get him and Rob to come up here. Rob, who's also appeared in the IWS. And, you know, maybe I could get a tag team partner and, you know, we could face them. Maybe someone like me and Speedball Mike Bailey against, you know, him and Rob Van Dam. I think that's a match that everyone would love to see. Um, right so that would def Damn. definitely. Speaking of Rob Van Dam, I got his Rob Van Dam CDD. <laughs> there it is. Nice. It's helping you. 
taste good and they work good. I was wondering, what was the book you were holding up before Sabu? Do you have a book there that says Sabu on it? Oh, yes. It caught my eye. What Sabu and the Three Little Pigs? Oh, oh that. that. No, the other one, yeah. I, I love this one. Okay. Oh, you mean uh, you mean his uh, Little Piggies? The old book? <laughs> yes. Bedtime Story. I've never, see, never seen that book before. That's fantastic. Oh, yeah, it just came out. It hasn't been released yet. Oh, yeah, okay. So easiest way to find it right now is ecwsabu.com. That's his website. So ecwsabu.com. And uh, his Twitter is at the real Sabu ECW. And um, let's see, I'm, I think that's the same as his uh, Instagram too, right? Yes, Instagram is the real Sabu. Well, that's oh, a good yeah, way to that's a good way to wind it down. We'll put it solid. we'll put it all up. I just we'll make sure to have everybody this knows because you were talking about that fire match. I did a calendar. I was bringing out. Oh wow! Calendars. That's like uh, that's the. Uh, Where's your uncle there? The one saying, get off my leg. <laughs> yeah, it's a, that, that's, this picture is from that match. I meant the cover up is a, and here's me jumping off a, <laughs> I have to get my own <laughs> step over. Air Sabu, but Air Genie, he jumped off a chair. He does oh, air, air, uh, air Sabu, I do Air Genie, it's like a just, you know, right flying on. forearm. That's my glory day of uh, what I get to do during Sabu's matches, so I was happy to do it. I got to see that live when they were up here for IWS. I saw oh, you did? Sex yeah. 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 yeah, and he deserved it. I remember yeah. that. <laughs> well, Jeremy here, I want to ask you now, 15 years in the business, do you have any advice for rising stars just breaking into it? Um, I don't have advice myself, but I just like to pass on advice that was given to me. Um, okay. And it's, it's some simple stuff. You know, I was told by Abdullah the Butcher, you know, give the people violence. And I don't know why, but that always resonated with me. It's, you know, it's wrestling. It's a violent sport. You know, go out there and give the people violence. You go in there, you fight. You know, that's what people want to see. You watch a match. The second, you know, someone grabs on a hold, you know, the crowd quiets down. They sit down. They start talking to the person beside them. You know, you don't want that. You got to give the people violence. So that's always something that I stress. And I like that you watch a Jeremy Prophet match. You're going to see something violent. You're going to see, you know, yeah. someone that wants to, wants to hurt and maim his opponent. You know, that's the name of the game. It's making it look like you kill the guy without actually killing the guy. Um, so, so I always like to say that as advice. And the other advice is what Chris Jericho told me. Chris Jericho, who is another one of my, uh, you can call it a dream match, whatever you want to call it. Yes. Um, but Chris Jericho, when I, was, when I was very young, there was a, a picture I posted on Twitter of me at about 17 meeting Jericho. And the advice he gave me was, you know, wrestling is going to be harder than anything you do. It's going to be the hardest thing you ever do in your life. But if you work hard enough at it, you will make it. Look at me. I made it. So that's the two biggest pieces of advice I would give to anyone else out there. That's what I've been following pretty much since day one. I love that. That's so well said. Yeah. So Sabu, how about yourself now? And Melissa too, any advice for those just getting into the business? Well, this is what I say to everybody. You got to lift weights and, and practice on your basic wrestling. The, the guys that are good at their basics are good at other stuff. The ones that are bad at basics ain't good at anything. Well, I think for the most part, um, just do not piss people off. I, I, I think the smartest thing to do is like bite your lip and, and do what you're told and you're and, told. and and listen yeah. to, I used to to uh, you know uh, <laughs> just to do what you're told. They want good soldiers, you know. They they want uh, people who are gonna to, to do Second what they're told to do <laughs> and and right. You know, they expect you to, they don't, they don't want to spend a lot of time having to go over stuff with you over and over. They want you to like perform, you do your job and you do it and you don't make stuff complicated. So yeah. I would say bite your lip a lot of the times. You don't really want to have a lot of bad opinions and yeah. basically do your job, do your job and you'll, you'll have a career. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's going to finish us off. Thank you. All three of you. Amazing guests. I love the conversations and this is it for this episode. Thank so thank you. <laughs> All right. Perfect. We're, uh, get the percentage we are all fair. He get <laughs> you got a pose, Jeremy. I don't really have a pose. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a poser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on i i hear you're a poser all the time <laughs> <laughs>
And here I am again mentioning our incredible sponsors, Rasslin Pins. Now, if you heard me mention them two times before and you're hearing this for a third time, why haven't you already ordered some pins at this point? You are an hour deep in the episode. Go on your phone, order some Rasslin Pins, and type in RRR15OFF upon checkout to get yourself 15% off Courtesy of Rewind Recap Relive, of course, your next Rasslin' Pins order. Go to this link right here or in the description box below, and I'll see you soon. Woo! Messy Daddy! Boogie Woogie Man feel good! I tell my people and my brothers and sisters, don't you dare! Don't you dare miss online! Rewind! Recap! Relive! Oh yeah!